Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is the 10th of February and it's Friday evening. The weather here has been crazy. Seesaw, hot, cold, snow, back to heat. The plants don't know what to do and I don't know what to do. Today I got some fairly bad news. My mom had a mini stroke and she's 91 years old living in a uh, rest home in Orlando, Florida. And my sister called me that she was hospitalized again. So I may have to go away for a few days and go visit mom and uh, make sure that I'm there for her. All right, so let's change the subject to something more pleasant. Even though it means talking about an R3000 that has decided to uh, go south on me. As you know, I received an R3000 from a user who just didn't want it anymore. And basically he mailed it to me. And so when I set it up, it ended up that the photo uh, black was not printing. And I know that these printers have the black ink switch valve. And I figure, okay, it could be that. Let me switch over to matte. And I managed to get matte to work, but I could never get photo black to work. So the other day I was printing something to the printer and I didn't realize that the driver had switched itself back to photo glossy paper. So of course it triggered a black ink change in long story short i cannot get my matte black to print anymore so i think the valve itself is shot so i am looking for a replacement uh, ink delivery system for it if any of you know of a source online that i could purchase one of those i be i would be more than willing to replace it myself i do have the uh, service manual for it so it'll just be a little mechanical project for me to attempt i don't have any money invested in that printer so i think it'll be worthwhile all right hand meal papers i have done several already maybe one or two not that many and i decided to jump over to the leonardo canvas glossy and it is fabulous look at this Printed on the Pro 1 with full Chroma Optimizer application. It's gorgeous. Now normally what I do with this type of uh, media is I attach it to Masonite with an adhesive. And then I mount that Masonite onto a frame so that it looks like an old-fashioned painting would have been displayed. I really don't like the uh, gallery wraps at all. Yeah, it's just not my my uh, cup of tea, so to speak. So, yeah, this is beautiful. I recommend this. I don't know about any other glossy or any kind of canvas with a gloss. Um, I know they're out there, but I, again, I'm not familiar with them at all. I know many of you are. But this particular one is awesome. It's beautiful. And it printed perfectly using the ICC profile from Hannah Mule for the Leonardo canvas and the Pro 1. All right. So... Again, recommend it. It's very stiff though. It's not easy to wrap this. So that's why I probably, if I buy some 13 by 19 sheets of this, I will mount them on eighth inch masonite and then frame those. All right, so since my R3000 is out of commission for now, I'm using the Epson R2880 as my go-to printer to test ink sets. So I loaded up a cartridge set with the cone inks the k3 system and uh, remember i received the light light black and the light black and the ultra hd matte black so i loaded the system for use with photo black because you have to share one of the channels with either photo black or matte black and then i proceeded to just print some shots. I went back in time, found this uh, picture of my daughter and uh, little Nathan when he was about a year and a half, and they were about to slide down the tongue of the big whale at a uh, kind of a, a um, fairy tale type park that we have here in Maryland, and it's quite a lot of fun. He loves it there. But again, beautiful color, great, nice, vibrant colors, good shadows, good DMAX, good gloss. The, Ink itself is actually glossier than the paper. So this area here on the knee is pure white. No ink is applied. It's duller than the paper. 
than the paper with ink on it, that is. So again, it's not like printing on the Pro 1 where you can just assign full application of a chroma automizer or the P400 or the R2000 where you can just apply overall gloss optimizer and you will even all of those areas up to the point where you see no gloss differential whatsoever. You have to deal with this type of situation where you're using uh, inks that are actually quite glossy to begin with on papers that are not as glossy. Okay, and that's something that will happen and you'll see it when the light hits it at an acute angle. So here's the boy. He's a year and a half again on the swing. Good rendition here on the seat. I see the deepest blacks here. I see detail on the seat that normally would just block up and go black. And uh, if I was to do this again, I would warm it up a tiny bit. It's a little bit too cool for my taste. But that's what it looks like on the monitor. So that's a good match. It's just my bad uh, editing in this case. Birch tree with the uh, bark about to peel off. Bright evergreens in the back. Again, good reproduction of this image. So that ink performs quite nicely. Mr. Billy Goat here, you can touch every single hair on that, that bad boy. I don't know if you can see the detail on that, on that f head and uh, quite a nice rendition on the 2880. I see his nostril is not quite pure black, but it's almost there. Inside of his ear, right here in this part of the ear is pure black. The horns, you almost don't want to touch them. It's so realistic. So again, really nice. This area here is blown to pure white, so there is gloss differential there. You know, that's, that's what happens. The rest of the print that contains ink has no gloss differential whatsoever. It's very even all the way across. So that's what happens. So there are a lot of tricks to kind of bring down the um, areas that are just specular highlights with just, you know, 255, 255, 255. You can bring them down a little bit so that they actually receive a little bit of like a gray application of ink and uh, diminish that effect. This one here is perfectly even because there is no pure white anywhere. So I like that. These colors are ridiculous. These blues are very difficult to reproduce and yet they were reproduced quite nicely. I love it. So I'm very happy with that ink set. For the first time ever, I had never tested the cone inks before. Tell you the truth, they were a little bit expensive. And so I always uh, tended to buy something around the $15, $20 range for four ounces. These go for about 26, depending on the, the time of the year and whether they're on sale or not. But uh, I managed to get these on eBay, the whole lot, minus the, these three here for like $90. So I couldn't pass it up. All right, remember the uh, advanced black and white rendition that I did using neutral? Here it is. This is on the uh, P800 using PC K3 HD inks. Now here is a rendition of the same image using full color process. with cone inks, okay? And this is not using, this is on, on the luster paper, so this is using photo black. You can see that the HD black for the P800 is denser than the photo black for cone. There's a slight variation in the tonalities, of course, because nothing has been done with custom profiling yet. So I'm still dealing with just basic uh, OEM profiles. So this is with printed with a ICC profile from Epson. This is printed with advanced black and white on the 2880. This one's a little bit greenish cyanish looking. Okay. And this one's neutral throughout. Beautiful detail, beautiful detail here. This is, I mean, flawless detail. Here, these areas here contain more separation than on the one printed with the ICC profile. It tends to block up more. 
any, anywhere where these low tonalities existed, they tend to be more compressed on the one printed with the ICC profile for some reason. Again, I'm not a profile expert, and those of you who know how to read a 3D uh, depiction of a profile can look at them and be able to determine that. So this is, again, ICC profile. This is advanced black and white and using the cone inks. Okay, so then I decided, what the heck, it's late. Let me just do a few more prints before I go to bed. And so I opened up a box of... Um, our archival matte papers right here on top and went ahead and printed some black and whites of my go-to image again and we'll see this is all straight with yeah this is advanced black and white this is color using of course the ICC profile from Epson and yeah that black ink is very very deep now I could actually print some patches and measure them with my color monkey and determine what the difference is between the regular um, matte black and the ultra HD matte black. Okay, there should be a difference that's actually readable with the color monkey. But again, I, like I always said, I'm a visual guy. I leave that kind of experimentation to the why, you know, these technicians who like to play with that sort of a uh, work. I, I really don't like to delve in that world. Colorimetry. No, that's not for me. I like visuals. So I look at something I go, wow, that's awesome. Or no, that needs improvement. So again, this is lovely. The black here is about as black as I would ever want it to be. This is with the high density or ultra HD matte black. Beautiful. And remember, this is matte paper. Matte paper is not known for the high DMAX, unless you have a really, really good quality matte paper from the higher end companies, okay? Especially if you go with Epson, you would have to go to their legacy brand. And really those legacy papers are made by other famous brands, not Epson. So in the color rendition, again, this is very good. This is pure black. I mean, that is like, looks like a black hole. Color, beautiful. Nice detail here, very open, very open here as well. So, beautiful. I'm happy with that result. Very happy. Now, I decided to this, then go ahead and print me a standard image on the same kind of paper. And this is where the actual truth comes out. Overall, when you look at it, you go, oh, very good. Nice skin tones. Those look normal. This looks neutral. Oh boy, I want to eat those berries. Look at that sunset. Oh, look at this solidified lava sea. Oh, that looks gorgeous. That looks like the fall. Yeah, everything looks beautiful until you look at this. That's when it hits you. There is a green band right here. Let's get over here closer to the camera. Let me see if I can line this up. Pardon me. Right here, there's a green band and over here it's getting warm right on this area here you can see the greenish tone here okay it neutralizes itself down here you can actually see all of the tones if i put a backlight behind this i can actually see even the last step this is pure black right here and it's as black as it can get that is super super deep black right here very good but this has a hue it's green so that's not good so the only way to solve this, and also another fault right here, you can see this green band from darkest to light. You have banding right here. You have a band developing here. And remember, I showed you that in another example when I was discussing uh, rendering intents. So we'll solve that with a custom profile. I'm working on it right now as I speak. I'm drawing the first chart then i'm going to go ahead and scan it print the second chart and proceed and then i will reprint this and see what the differences are okay and if i see something that's really an improvement i'll show it to you guys and share it i'll even uh, be able to um, then go back and maybe repeat some of these other 
photographs and see if there's an improvement between using the, just like this one was printed with the ICC profile from Epson, I would go back and then print duplicates of some of the ones I did using my profile and see how that improves matters. All right, that is it. Oh, last night I received a call after a bit of a discussion on one of the forums and also by email with an individual who owns a Pro One. And to make this long story short, because we spoke for an hour and a half last night, Pro One that he began using with OEM inks, as everybody does, and then he started using Chinese compatible cartridges. It all went well for a while, and then bingo, the B500 error showed his ugly face. And that's a really serious error. That kind of paralyzes your printer and it really needs to be sent in. It can be fixed by actually removing the side paddles because the doors for the cartridges won't even operate anymore. So you have to literally remove the side panels and operate the door by hand and, and unlatch it. And so then once you get the cartridges out, you're supposed to then unplug everything, put new cartridges in with the good chips, that means OEM chips, that's going to cost you a bunch of money. And that will solve the problem on, in most cases. I've only heard of this one other time. And so that's going to be, I, I wish him uh, you know, all the luck in the world. I hope he can solve that. And I steered him to the correct people so that he can discuss that with them. But anyway, the moral of the story, stay away from these compatible cards if you have a Pro One. If you want the best, most reliable and lowest cost option, you need to Either modify your own original card so that they can accept single-use chips that you can buy from Precision Colors as well as their ink set for it, okay? You will carve out a little crevice in the chip compartment because the Chinese chips are a little bit thicker than the original chips and they will not sit flush and you must do that. Or your other option is to order a pre-machined or pre-modified set from me and then order your other two supplies from Precision Colors. And let me tell you, so far, I've been using this now for quite a bit and nothing has failed. No problems whatsoever. So until something bad happens, I can vouch that the system works. The chips are fully compatible with the firmware. And so even the newest firmware seems to be fine with it. And so that's the best option we have at this point because there's no such thing as a resetter for these cartridges. All right, so that is it. Thank you so much. As always, please subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.